Hello YouTube, welcome to Nutkin Farm. I'm doing this video in response to a recent comment on um, one of my other videos um, from a user who wanted to know how to grow a macadamia tree in their backyard. And, um, you know, for those who are new to the channel, I have about 3,000 macadamia trees and so I thought, well, I should be able to give some advice on how to look after just one of them. And um, so here I am to do a video on how you might look after a macadamia tree growing one in your backyard. First of all, um, macadamias don't like frost. And so if your backyard is in a very cold city, um, I'm you know, thinking Hobart or, or you know, a couple of areas that do get winter frost, you probably don't want to uh, plant a macadamia tree at all. It's going to cause you nothing but heartache uh, because, you know, particularly young macadamia trees get very, very wounded by frost and quite often killed. So don't be cruel. Um, if, you're any, if you're in any of the other capital cities of Australia or, or most of them in New Zealand or anywhere in a sort of a warm temperate or tropical climate, macadamia trees should do very well. Um, they don't mind cold just so long as they get a bit of warm weather in spring and summer. And they do need a bit of rainfall as well. So, you know, if it's dry, be prepared to do a bit of watering. Okay, next up, where do you get your macadamia tree from? And common question, can I just take a macadamia nut out of a bag of macadamia nuts and put it in the ground? Um, the answer to that is yes, you can, but you're unlikely to end up with a good result. Most of the nuts you find in bags of macadamia nuts, this is with the shell on, um, they can have a go at germinating, but in general, they've been very much dried before you get them and um, you, you won't get a whole lot of success. If you do get success from germinating those nuts, you're going to have a random cross between the existing commercial varieties of nut, and on average, you, you'll get a nut that probably isn't much good. It may not taste very much like a macadamia. It may not fruit very well at all, because it's really an entirely random cross that hasn't been tested. Most of the macadamias you'd want to grow have been developed over many, many breeding cycles and narrowed down from thousands and thousands of seedlings from random nuts. Um, if you want to take that one in 1,000 chance yourself, by all means plant a nut, but really what you want is a grafted tree from a nursery. Now, the kind of nurseries that supply macadamia farmers are not the same who will supply you. You can sometimes find them on Facebook Marketplace or other sites, but uh, they, you know, there's a little bit of risk involved there. Uh, in Australia, one of the best places to go is Daly's Fruit Tree Nursery, and uh, Daly sells a number of varieties that are, um, on average, okay. Um, I've been through their varieties. They sell the ones that are in the public domain because the ones with plant breeders' rights unfortunately can't be sold to the general public. Um, of the ones that Dailies do sell, you can have a look at varieties like um, 660 or 741. These are varieties that self-pollinate, so they don't really need another tree around to cross-pollinate with. However, any of those varieties that you choose will self-pollinate a little bit and bear you some nuts if you've only got room for, for one tree. If you've got room for two, get two different ones. Um, but generally, if you're just after one tree for your backyard, um, the varieties I thought that would, might be the best for you would be uh, possibly um, 741, which, is, which they do sell. Um, it can be a fairly tall tree, but they're prunable and pretty strong. And they'll give you, um, you know, a reasonably high quantity of nuts just from self-pollinating. Um, there's another little variety called Pink Alicious um, that's been specifically developed for the home market. A bit dwarfing and it has pink flowers. Um, look, I wouldn't say no to it, um, but um, don't take anything out of the, the, the Pink Alicious name. It's bred from a variety of macadamia that's probably the least delicious uh, of all the macadamias you can grow. Uh, I'm not quite sure how pinkalicious tastes. It could be an exception to that rule, but I, I doubt it. Um, really depends on the space you've got. 
but then what you'll get is a grafted tree and a grafted tree looks a little bit like this one that's just been planted uh, this one's about three foot high you might get them a little smaller from dailies uh, there's the graft at the bottom with that black tape around it and there's the main tree up the top now as to planting the macadamia in your backyard i've already done a video on that so i'm not going to repeat myself but there's a picture of a freshly planted macadamia with a bit of pelletized um, uh, chook manure uh, fertilizing it and a bit of osmocote uh, they need a bit of water particularly if you're planting in a dry season like spring is in the eastern half of australia uh, but other than that you just give them some watering and let them grow now moving on to when they do start growing um, they take a little while to take off they're not sort of you know they're not jackrabbit trees that sort of just jump up but within a couple of years you can expect the tree to look something a bit more like these ones these are in that two year old range just about uh, a little under two but but that's uh, that's how they can start to look now what you do with them at this point depends on what shape you want um, generally speaking these trees get thinned down to what's called a central leader and the other ones the other side branches get chopped out so that you end up with a tree at, at adulthood that looks a bit like these ones here um, in the mature trees I've got here so you've got one or at most two stems going up and there's space underneath the tree. Now we macadamia farmers do that so that we can get machinery under the tree to harvest and that sort of thing. If you prefer, you can leave it bushy and have it growing out with more stems than, than one or two uh, and you'll get foliage that will go almost sort of right down to the ground. Uh, and nuts that will almost go right down to the ground. You will actually get more nuts that way, um, but it depends on really what you want. If you want a tree that has a bit of a canopy that you can walk under like this, um, then you prune out the side branches after a couple of years and get one main branch to go up and give you, uh, you know, give you that branching out further up. What do you do for feeding them in the backyard? Well, macadamias do reward a bit of feeding. They do like manure-based food. Um, you can, in my opinion, get away with things like osmocote um, if you want to feed osmocote. But they're fairly heavy feeders, these trees, and so they'll reward a good bit of feeding. They love mulch around their roots, so if you can give them some mulch, particularly near the stem, uh, sugar cane mulch is a good one. Lucerne mulch is wonderful if you can afford it. Um, these are sorts of things that the tree roots, which hang fairly close to the trunk, um, they'll, they'll reward you because, you know, they, they love feeding on mulch and decaying organic matter. Even grass clippings. Don't necessarily throw fresh green grass clippings on the trees, but if you have some dried old grass clippings, that's lovely mulch to put around the base of the tree as well. So they're not like citrus trees, they're not like fruits. So, you know, the tree you see on top isn't mirrored by an equal root system underneath. The roots are actually fairly small and compact. They're not invasive, it's not a rubber tree, it's not anything like that where, where sort of the roots will go under your pathways and push everything up. So it's actually not a bad backyard tree. Um, once it does get big, um, you can prune it to size. Um, most of the most of the trees will accept pruning and you can keep it as low as two or three meters if you want to although really you know to give it its head you'd probably want it to grow about four or five meters before you started taking tops off because you will get you will get fewer nuts as a result of that um, again you know they they like water they consume quite a, a lot of water so if you were in a wet climate don't worry about watering it but if you're in a dry climate you might have to do that um, with the feeding you there's no specific time of year to feed but you'd want some manure rotting down in late winter because that'll give its development in early spring 
and they often have a flush in late summer as well so you know if you put down some manure based fertilizer or even some osmocote in summer it will help feed the tree when it has a bit of a growth spurt in autumn particularly where autumn is the wettest time of the year as it is again in in most of eastern australia um, obviously adapt this advice for wherever you are watching this which could of course be anywhere in the world so what about fruiting well um, if you're following the australian seasons the fruiting of the macadamia happens over the warmer months. You have flowering in early spring. Um, the nuts will then set and become baby nuts and eventually start dropping, depending on the variety, in um, about February, March in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and you know, obviously early autumn, anywhere around the world that you, you do grow them. You don't pick the nuts off the trees they drop for you when they're ready if you pick them off the trees what will happen is you're getting them immature where the nuts won't taste fully developed and they won't have the proper amount of oil in them um, let them drop by all means pick them up immediately when they drop the sooner you pick them up the, the nicer they taste um, but uh, yeah let them let them drop and then um, harvest them now in a home situation, unlike in a farm where we have to spray for pests that go from tree to tree, so long as there aren't many other macadamia trees around, your tree shouldn't be too bothered by pests. Um, you will occasionally get the odd aphid or that sort of thing. The tree can handle those sorts of pests pretty well by itself. Um, if it picks up any other pests, well, unfortunately, in terms of what's available for uh, consumers, there isn't much you can do if, if some pests start to attack the tree. Um, there may, at the, you know, at the time of making this video, you may be able to get access to a, a confidor-like um, chemical, which you can put in as a tablet at the base of the plant. And if anything's eating the leaves, it will probably hamper, if not kill it. Other than that, though, you shouldn't need to budget for any pest control um, on the average sort of solo macadamia tree. Um, if you do have rats in the neighbourhood, bear in mind that the rat is the only animal with teeth sharp enough to get straight through um, a macadamia shell and rats love macadamias. So think twice about planting in a, in a, a ratty district uh, or, you know, the solution other than that is pick up nuts regularly when they drop so that there's nothing for the rats to pick off the ground um, and that can be uh, yeah that can be your best defense and then you won't you won't have rats coming to your macadamia tree thinking it's um, thinking it's Christmas if you do see little nuts on the ground with small holes eaten out of them that that is a sign of a rat and uh, they only eat a much, they only eat a little bit of the shell so they can get the nut out with their clever teeth um, and uh, and not spend too much energy doing it other than that though you know you pick up a few nuts in autumn um, they drop over a you know a few months usually and um, you can watch them grow you can get them out of their husk and there are plenty of other YouTube videos on how to cook them, um, how to roast them, and, and do all sorts of other nice things, which is, of course, why we grow a macadamia in the first place. Now, as you can see, the mature macadamia tree is good for shade. It's actually quite a pretty tree as well, I think. It, well, maybe I'm biased. I, I see too many of them, but I still think they're quite a quite a pretty tree to have and a very much an Australian native look. Um, in flower, they are absolutely gorgeous, um, very much the rival of the wattles and other spring flowering trees that you see in people's gardens. So you have that to look forward to, but be prepared to wait a few years before they really start flowering and putting on a show for you. Um, do I recommend growing them in the backyard? Yes, I do. I think they're a, I think they're a good tree. Um, they should be relatively trouble free. You know, they will reward feeding. They will reward mulching. You can sort of neglect them um, so long as the soil isn't sort of too boggy or infertile or, or sandy. You know, they, they just like sort of mid-range soil. They can cope with clay. Um, and um, 
yeah, you've got, you know, the potential for a really nice, low-maintenance, thoroughly Australian tree in your backyard. So, there's my tips on growing the macadamia in your own backyard. Uh, if anyone else has any um, tricks or tips for growing that backyard macadamia, love to hear from you in the comments section below. That way we can all learn something. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.